Wondering what's next in your business or personal life? Welcome to Success to Significance, Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings, a podcast dedicated to helping you with all of life's challenges, discoveries, and opportunities. Whether you're seeking a new career, retirement, or simply wanting to make an impact in your community or the world. Join Jen DuPlessis and her guests as they explore how to start, what to do when you're in the thick of a change or growth, and how to leave a mark in this world after breaking through your next achievement. You are moments away from the aha you've been seeking. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to this episode. I am so delighted and uh, happy to introduce you to our guest today, Susan Stutzel. Uh, She is a um, person that we want to share her story about today. And when we talk about cracking through uh, ceilings, she is someone who has definitely broken through some ceilings, but she is passionate about how uh, freeing professional women who feel uh, who are self-sabotaging their goals and helping them build a life of purpose and balance. And as a leadership coach, she helps her clients ditch overwhelm by finding the voice through the process of rebuilding habits and expectations so that they can feel successful both professionally and at home. And, you know, of course, this resonates with me because this is exactly what I do as well. Um, so I think that we're going to have a great conversation. So welcome to the show, Susan. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. It is wonderful to be here. Awesome. So, um, you know, I mean, we have kind of this, and I, I'm so excited to hear about your story because, uh, you know, we've had, we have similar stories in the sense that we hit a breaking point. A breaking point where we said, I can't do it all. I don't want to do it all. Um, Well, I don't believe in balance. Um, I believe in something else. Um, I do not believe in balance. I know that you do. And that is certainly fine. Um, But you came to that realization and said, I can't do it anymore. Enough is enough. There's got to be a better way. And you came up with some better ways. So take us back to what was happening in your life when you finally had this so that we can explore what you have life after breaking through the glass ceiling. What was that glass ceiling for you? It doesn't have to be financial, but it could be emotional, right? But what was that ceiling for you? Yeah, for me, that was like, I was, I was working toward all the things like I had learned in my life to work hard. You know, I can do it if I can work hard enough and the hustle. And I got so caught up in that hustle of doing all the things and the number one perfectionist in me was trying to do them all perfectly. And I found myself at a moment that I had two toddlers at home and I was still trying to just kill it in the world and have this amazing career that I loved and raise these perfect children and keep the perfect marriage and the perfect, perfectly clean home. Like, I think you're sensing all of the perfect Um, that I'm working through here. And I vividly remember a moment that I just closed myself off in my bedroom and I just cried. I was like, I am so tired. I can't do this anymore. And it was just like that moment of realization that what am I doing? Am I really working hard and spending all of this time on all of the right things? Because when I'm, you know, when I'm home, I'm thinking about the work that needs done. When I'm at work, I'm thinking I'm all the things that I'm missing with these, you know, beautiful, precious children that I was blessed with. And what am I missing out on? And what is happening in my marriage? And I just had that moment, like, I'm failing at all of it because when I'm one place, I'm thinking about the other and just never feeling present where I was at. And that was the moment that I realized something has to change. This is not a sustainable life. This is not the life that I had imagined or the life that I wanted. And so why am I, why am I doing it? Why am I spending my time each and every day doing the same thing over and over again? And it's exhausting and it's not working and it wasn't life-giving. So that was the moment for me. Yeah. So how did you feel after you made that decision? You know, were you someone who said, you know, I I don't know what to do. Did you cave in for a while? Did you immediately say, that's it. I'm going to move, you know, move forward. Tell us a little bit about your feelings, how you, how you uh, were increased your awareness of what the situation you were in, but then you had to make a shift to, an emotional state that made a difference for you moving forward. So to kind of walk us through that process of you, you know, coming out of it. Yeah. 
It really was a moment of just brokenness and realization that, you know, this, like I said, this isn't sustainable, but I'm also not somebody that, that kind of gets sucked into that. So it was like at the same time it was broken, but then, you know, after a good cry, it was this freeing moment of, okay, but now, you know, so now that, you know, what are you going to do with that? And that was when, like, it was just that, like this weight was lifted, like, oh, I don't have to do it all. And that was when I started working with uh, my first coach and walking through, like, what is possible? What is it that I want? What am I going for? Because where I was at wasn't working but I knew that I had choices. Like I had the choice to make, to decide what's next for me. And I always have been a bit of a, a, an optimist. And so looking ahead going, okay, well, I can change, I can learn, I can pivot. I am resilient. I've been through lots of changes in my life. So this is just one more. And I just, that's where I dove in to really, you know, define for myself what success was and what I wanted out of life so that then I could work toward that instead of working toward what I thought <laughs> success yeah. was or what, what I was yeah. going for before. What society but thinks, really. right? It's, what society yeah. thinks it is, you know, and there's a definition yeah. there. Yeah, no question, no question about it. So, so as you started, you know, understanding and saying, okay, I'm resilient, I got this, I can, I can do this for myself. What did your business look like then? when you made that shift, because this is way before you got, you got into coaching and in sharing this back to other people. So how did your business change? Yeah. Um, you know, it changed and your life. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It changed a lot. And so while I, I start off by saying, you know, like I knew I could change it and I, you know, have the power of choice here. It was also a lot of leaning on others, you know, like, you know, just really leaning into my husband for, you know, where I needed support, where I needed help, leaning into a coach to help me figure out, you know, what's next in this career. And so what I think is surprising enough is that I made a career shift to start my own CPA practice. Okay. So you're thinking, okay, so you're overwhelmed. You're not sure what to do. You're and you're going to go do taxes. Here. What the French toast. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So let's start a business because that sounds easier, <laughs> yeah. but actually that was, it was a great move for me because part of the overwhelm, I was in a place that the culture wasn't a good fit for me. So some of it was just that like state of uncomfort, knowing that this is not, this is not for me. So what is, and so I did, I started my own business. I took a, a leap of faith and stepped out on my own with no clients, no, <laughs> you know, no known future, but yet not a huge fear of the unknown because it was, it was, it just felt like the right step. It's like, this mm -hmm. is what I'm supposed to do. And so then it was no way, you know, really honing in on what are you good at? Where do you want to develop and where do you want to build that? And so then it felt a much more authentic place for me because I was building something and building a culture, building a brand that I was proud of. Yeah. And because I could set my own schedule, then being able to be home when I, when I wanted to be home and set my schedule and, you know, shut off in the evenings. And that, that was part of that building the life that I really love. Yeah. So if someone's listening or, you know, and or watching us um, and they're, you know, how I wouldn't even say that they're in that situation. Maybe they don't have the awareness of it, but they're hearing this and they're saying, you know, is this where I want to be? Do I want to be there? What are some of the symptoms that they should be looking at? Or some of the, it's not even really symptoms because I, I guess some of the symptoms are I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I get that. But what are some of the, the other signs that they should be looking at that says, Hey, you know what? Maybe it's time for a shift here. Maybe it's time for some type of transformation from what I'm doing now how I'm doing it to what I want to do and how I want to do that. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. It's feeling just that overwhelm is that is is really a key word for me because that's mm -hmm. where I felt that I was at. But it, it also shows up in, you know, what does your Monday morning look like? Are you excited and ready to go? Is it you feel ready for your week? You know, what is it that you're looking forward to? Mm -hmm. Or is it that, oh, it's Monday again, or even the mm -hmm. Sunday night, like, oh, the weekend is over. You know, yeah. so I think it's that that state of uncomfort, the lack of joy, like 
for me, when you're doing what you love and what you're made to do, it's joyful. Are there still hard days? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. But there's, there's joy in it. And there's a sense of pride knowing you're doing what you were created for. Yeah. So you mentioned that you talked to, uh, uh, I mean, that you had a coach and you leaned on your husband. What did you read? What did you consume at that time as well as you were going through that process? Did you, if you can recall, did you have any uh, consumption of, you know, podcasts of books that were helpful for you? Did you surround yourself? Did you go to retreats? What did you do to to get change your state and and be surrounded with the resources to be able to pull you forward? Yeah, good question. I, I can't say that I remember what I was reading at the time, though I am a, a total junkie of self-help books, of leadership mm-hmm. development, yeah. like anything John Maxwell just makes my day. Mm-hmm. Um, years later, actually, I read Mindset by Carol Dweck, and that was a book that was really life-shifting for me and just that recognizing that fixed versus growth mindset. Um, you know, but thinking back to that, that time, I don't know that I was really into podcasts as much as I am now. I think that that has grown Mm -hmm. more and I I love the opportunities that we have now. Um, but I've always been a reader. And so just definitely leadership development and, and self-awareness. I'm a big advocate for, I think Michael Hyatt said Mm -hmm. in every situation, we either learn or we grow. And so it's, it's not, uh, it's not failure. We're winning or we're learning. And I think learning from, you know, decisions I've made, things that I've done just along my journey, I can look back and it's like every moment, every position that I had, every, you know, career shift that I made, I know what I learned from that. And there are people that I met that I may not have met otherwise. And, you know, just looking at that journey and recognizing along the process, here's what I take from that. Here's what I pull from that. Here's what I learned about myself. And then that helps me to make the next step. Yeah. I think it's a life of gratitude, right? <laughs> Definitely yeah, absolutely. Life of gratitude. Every, yeah. every single day, every single day. So, okay. So let's move forward then into, you know, so you had your CPA firm and, that, and that's going fine or still is going fine. And, but you just had this poll that said, I've got to share this with other people because I figured it out and now it's, it's something I want to be able to share with people. And I know that you have, um, you know, uh, talking about, you know, how your goals might be sabotaging your sanity. So I want to talk about that. Are the goals too zealous? Are they, what, why would a goal be sabotaging your sanity? There are so many like amazing conferences and seminars on setting goals. And I think many times they relate to the business and how you can, you know, meet new revenue goals or you can meet new marketing strategies and all of your goals there. But for me, it's important to to take a step back and really look at the holistic perspective, Mm -hmm. the goals in relation to not only the business that you're in or that you want to grow, but also all of the hats that you wear, you know, as a, as a mom or a parent, as, you know, the volunteer in organizations, as a mentor and a friend, like what is that holistic life perspective? What is that vision that you want for your absolute best life? And then set goals with all of those things in mind, because when you just set a revenue goal, like I've seen women do amazing things in business, But then at the same time, they're telling me their marriage is struggling or their kids don't even want to be around them. Like they're missing that. And to me, it's keeping all of that in perspective so that you're taking all of your life with you every step of the way. Yeah, it's a wheel of life, right? It's the whole wheel of life that we've seen, you know, numerous times um, there. So, so yeah, you're right. Um, You know, I think it's shining a light on the wrong goals uh, or just on one goal (laughs) and not the other. So I know that you also help women. um, with purpose and passion, right. And defining that. And I, I think that this is a, this is something I find with, um, everyone. Cause I coach men and women. Um, but I find this with everyone is that they don't have a strong why. Um, and we can all watch Simon Sinek a thousand times with his why, and we get it because it's an iPhone, but we don't get it when it's our personal life. So share with us how you walk people down that path of defining and figuring out what their why is. Yeah, it's, it's really a process of, of really that self-discovery of digging in for yourself. What really lights you up? 
Like when you set aside, you know, everyone's opinions and everybody's ideas and really just dig in for yourself and figure out what is it that gets you really excited or what makes you angry and makes you want to change something like that fire in your stomach or that, you know, that joy that you get when you're doing something Mm -hmm. really digging in for that for yourself. And then asking yourself why a thousand times, why this, okay, go deeper and deeper. And that just so much value in coaching around that digging deep and thinking for yourself and then giving yourself the space to really go there and to challenge that. Yeah, I think that's really good. And, you know, I mean, there's so much work that is done to that. I know you can't answer that question in one question because <laughs> there is so much work that has to be done there. Some self-awareness and, and deep deepening, right? Some going, going deeper into our, our sage brain, the logical brain and get away from some of the motions as well. Um, right. So another thing that you talk about is, you know, talking about their, about people's top priorities and trying to get all done, right? It always reminds me, and I'm a little older, a lot older, but it reminds me of the, the Calgon take me away commercial, you know, where the woman is going, Calgon, just take me away and take me away because I can't get it all done. I can't get it all done. Why are we so compelled to feel that we have to have it all done? Where does that stem from? It comes from a little bit of the perfectionist syndrome. It comes from wanting to people please. You know, it feels good to tell someone, yes, I'll do that for you and to do it. And so often we do that at the expense of ourselves. We say Mm -hmm. yes to so many things without stopping to recognize that every time we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. And that was a quote that I heard actually at a conference at kind of that breaking point time. Yeah. And it was like, wow, I wasn't being intentional about what I was saying no to. It was just like, oh, I can fit in one more thing. Oh yeah, that's not a problem. But it, but it was, and it was affecting my sleep. It was affecting my relationships. And so it is, it's saying no to almost everything really. Yeah. When you think about all of the different hats that we wear, especially as women, and if we have children, just there's so many things that we say yes to, but yet that no, is it's a hard word. But when we can really grasp that and unapologetically say no to things that are not our top priority, that's where the true joy and fulfillment comes. Yeah. I think it's called the glorification of busyness. <laughs> <laughs> watch me roar. I'm one yes. watch me roar for the men. You know, it's I'm the lion. Watch me go. You know, um, it's the glorification of busyness that we've stepped into in our society. And thankfully for the pandemic, um, it slowed us all down so that we could recognize that, hey, that wasn't so great after all. But I still see it in people, the glorification of busyness. Uh, look at me. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm traveling. I'm there. I'm there. And I, and I just look at people like that and say, gosh, you poor thing. You know, I hope that's what you want to do. Um, and it's funny because uh, every year I have a word, right? A word of the year. And several years ago, my words, uh, I had a few words there, um, but was don't be a yes woman, right? And that entire year, I talked about not being a yes woman. And that was part of my transformation as I was still figuring out my path that was going to be to pull myself out of that overwhelmed sabotage and daily chaos. Um, And it was, you know, life changing. And so I would encourage anyone who's listening, you know, to make that sort of your adage or your mantra for the next year is just don't be a yes person. Really think about why you want to be saying yes and going back to what Susan's talking about, about defining your, your uh, life goals, right? Your life goals, your holistic life goals, rather than just your monetary goals. So I think that's really powerful um, that you said that. So what, um, what does your client look like? Tell us, tell us a little bit about your client. Who's your perfect type of client that you want to help aside from the fact that it's a woman, because <laughs> I know you go to women. Yes, she is a woman in business or an entrepreneur who um, has one to three children and is trying to kill it at work and wants to be an amazing mom at home and wants to do all of the things perfectly and just currently feeling like she's failing at everything. And that's really the best way that I can describe because that was that's where I was at. It felt like I couldn't 
do anything the way that I really wanted to. And just in that place of overwhelm, but also that she's ready to step forward. She's ready to invest in herself and take that step forward and really create the change that she's, that she's looking for. And it's going to take going deep. It's going to take, you know, investing in her time and herself and ready to make some real change in, in habits and structures. And really bit the big one is learning to say no. Yeah. Yeah. So are your programs, um, are they group programs? Are they six, eight, 12 weeks? Is it private coaching only? Give us a little flavor about what some of the programs, how they're structured. Yes. Uh, primarily one-on-one coaching. Um, I believe there's so much value in just having that one-on-one time to, um, you know, to invest in yourself and to dig in. And I typically like to start with a three-month package as an introductory, and that it gives um, every other week a one-hour session to dig in. And then that gives the, the client in the time in between sessions to, you know, start making some changes and to start, um, you know, digging in into that self-awareness in between. And so I think three months is a good time to invest in yourself and dabble a little bit. And most of the time it extends into longer periods because then that's where value is really, really starting to break through and, and changes can happen. Yeah, that's great. So what does the future look like for you? What are you looking forward to? in your success personally, um, you know, with your family, how that continues to grow and what it looks like for you professionally. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this next, this next phase for me, because I am still um, working in my CPA practice and definitely growing in the coaching arena, which has been so exciting and so fulfilling for me just to see women truly overcome and, you know, step into a life that they truly love. And at the same time, I have two teenagers at home right now, 13 and 16 years old. And so watching them grow and also recognizing like, wow, I don't have a lot of time left with them. And so really, you know, investing in them and one of the things we've been talking about at home lately is, okay, you know, in these kind of last few years before they, you know, graduate from high school, like what trips do you want to take? What are the things that we want to do as a family to make sure that we're intentional, not only about, you know, how we spend our every day, but, but in the bigger trips, you know, the bigger things that we do together. And uh, we're really fortunate to have uh, a family that loves to be together. So while COVID hit and was such a huge <laughs> you know, impact for many of us and stepping back, like you said, and all of a sudden not having all of the things to do. Like for us, we already valued that time, but it was almost a a bit of a blessing amidst that to go, hey, wow, my kids aren't going to go off every single night of the week during the summer. And, you know, just having that, that time at home was really precious, even for us to, to be a little bit of an eye opener to recognize that. Yeah. And I think, I think there was a lot of personal growth as a result of that for everybody. Even if, even those of us that are in this space, there was a lot of personal growth that happened too, because we were quieted down long enough, you know, to be able to recognize some additional things that we could be doing as well. So, so what kind, what quote would you like to leave us with? And I already know that you gave one quote, but do you have a quote that you live by that, that helps people understand exactly what you're about? Yeah, it really, the, I have two, yes. So definitely that every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. But another one of my very favorites is incremental improvement is unstoppable. And that's by mm-hmm. Jordan Peterson. And I love that one because I truly believe that in making really small incremental changes, that gives us the momentum to keep going, to keep making changes. And then when we look back at ourselves a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, like the improvement that we've made is just phenomenal and can absolutely be life-changing. So that's another one of my absolute go-tos. Yeah. I, I love that because, you know, this podcast is called breaking through glass ceilings, right? Life after breaking through glass ceilings. What you're saying is let's just tap at it. And we will break through it too. So if you don't have the power, the wherewithal, the reserve, um, 
what do you call it, resources, right? You don't have all the things to crack that code and break through. You can tap your way through it. You can chisel at it and still Absolutely. break through just by creating these beautiful habits um, incrementally day in, day out. So thank you so much, Susan, for joining us today. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I hope that everyone who's listened is taking one little nugget away that they can change in their business to help them move from success to significance and break through their glass ceilings as well. What is the best way for us to contact you? Absolutely. Check out my website. It is sstutzelcoaching.com. And on there, you can um, find a way to help define success for yourself. And I also have another handout, uh, time management strategies for the busy working woman. So check me out there. I would love to connect. I'm also on LinkedIn at Stutzel Coaching. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all of the success in the coming years as you continue to grow your practice practices, both of them (laughs) growing your practices and move into where your passion is pulling you. So I really appreciate your time today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Thank you. You've been listening to Success to Significance with Jen Duplessis, the number one podcast for people wanting to give more value and make an impact. Loved this episode? Be sure to subscribe right now at www.jenduplessis.com slash S2S for more stories, strategies, and thoughts to help you gain significance and success. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Join us next week for another breakthrough episode. Thank you for listening.